Hello everyone, today we're going to complete the giveaway for the winner who won the actual uh, Scrabble palette here. So uh, this one is going to be basically, she chose the name of Tutankhamun. So instead of her name, I she chose to write out her name. So what I did, I took the personal name of Tutankhamun, which is written right over here. So this is Tutan Iman, living ruler of southern Iunu. So, and in the other cartouche, she wanted another name, which is the throne name of Tutankhamun, which is Keperure Neb. So Neb Keperure. So Neb Keperure. This is my logo information, my logo profile. And I had to choose another one for her that fit in here, and we basically chose the Golden Horus name uh, for her over here. So this would be basically the Golden Horus, the throne name, and the personal name of Tutankhamun. This was her choice. So what I'm going to do is just draw in the Tutankhamun for this live video so it doesn't take too long. If you guys want me to keep drawing, just let me know. But I'm going to fill in this one right over here. So we'll just zoom in. So I sketched it out. Is normally what the uh, Egyptians would do. And the ancients would do. So we're just going to go in really gentle here. Always taking it slow when doing the lines very carefully assuming this will work yeah there you go nice and slow nice and slow so the first uh, hieroglyphic here you see is a reed this is the eye symbol the next is the senate board which is the min sound And this is a Senate board, the same one I had done on the previous projects. There we go. And then we'll do the wave. Hello, everybody. I'm waving back. Sorry if I didn't see you. I'll wave back over here. So we'll do the next one as well. This is the wave. A water wave. We'll start back from this way. Nice and pointy. We'll just do it like that. There we go. And then we'll move over to the bread loaf. This is the letter T. I don't know. We'll do the other bread loaf on top. And then we'll do the chick, the quail, which is the oo sound. We'll come up over here. And there we go. And we'll do the two legs as well. Like that. So we already have the, the name of Tutankhamun, which is Tutan Iman, so the, the, the image of Amun, but we have to also finish off his full name. Everyone recognizes this symbol. This is the Anch symbol, or the symbol of life. A lot of the Egyptians wore this around their necks. And it's a very powerful symbol of life, and it's been brought down for generations, and even till today, people recognize it. So this is the actual full name, personal name of Tutankhamun, which is Tut Anch Imen. Of course, this is the honorific transposition. The god is always placed first in honor to the god. So the living, sorry, the living image, Tut of Amun. And that's Tutankhamun's personal, personal name. This completes his designation over here. This is the Heka symbol. 
This is a scepter, and it represents power. The Heka. Heka, and then here we have Shemai, which is southern, Iunu, or Heliopolis. And it's a branch, flower. And you would do the same here, here, here. When you draw hieroglyphics, make sure that you draw them with, with care. I know they're a little off right now, but I usually go over them a few times. I'm just basically doing the rough draft for you all. But once this is done, it's going to look a lot cleaner and a lot smoother. Because right now I'm just doing the rough draft for you so you all see how it's done. And this is Iunu. This is a determinant. This is the actual word Iunu, Heliopolis. This is usually used as a pillar. And it would be the symbol or the determinative of the word. So instead of writing out the full word, all you're doing is writing out the determinative. And this defines Iunu. So you don't have to put it in so many words in the one cartouche. You can simply just have one. So there's the completion of Tutankhamun's personal name. There are many variations, but this is the most common. You would even see it on many of his jewelry, his artifacts, his chairs, his furniture, anything that's for him. Now we'll move over to the throne name. This is actually my logo. If you look at it carefully, it's encompassed in a circle, but this is in a cartouche. And this is, this is basically Neb Keperuri, the many manifestations. So there's the many manifestations of Ra. So what we're going to do is, out of respect for the uh, ancients, the raw symbol is drawn first. The circles are usually difficult, but, you know, I'll just, again, this is just for now. I'll clean it up after and I'll send it out. But for now, I'm just drawing it in so you see. There we go. Don't worry about those lines. I'll always clean them up afterwards, make it nice and pretty. And then we'll go all the way around. Now, this is the Kepri. This is the Scarab Beetle. The Scarab Beetle always had a very powerful symbol. The ancient Egyptians looked at this creature, this insect, and noticed that it rolled a ball of dung or poop or whatever you like to call it, feces, around using its front back legs, so it would use its front legs to push and its back legs to push the ball back. So it would be basically kicking the ball with its legs. And it would roll this down for many kilometers, very far distances. And this would be its basically its only job in order to procreate, fill the, ch it, would be, it would have the eggs inside the, uh, the ball of dung. And then when the, when the task is complete, the scarab would die. And then what would emerge out of the ball of dung is after the, uh, the mating of the, these insects is the children or the offspring. They would come out and they would eat the ball of dung. In order in order to have their sustenance and nourishment, and then they can proceed on with their brewery, the many manifestations. So there's the many manifestations of Ra. So what we're going to do is, out of respect for the uh, ancients, the Ra symbol is drawn first. The circles are usually difficult, but, you know, I'll just, again, this is just for now. I'll clean it up after and I'll send it out. But for now, I'm just drawing it in so you see. There we go. Don't worry about those lines. I'll always clean them up afterwards, make it nice and pretty. And then we'll go all the way around. Now, this is the Kepri. This is the Scarab Beetle. The Scarab Beetle always had a very powerful symbol. The ancient Egyptians looked at this creature, this insect, and noticed that 
it rolled a ball of dung or poop or whatever you like to call it, feces, around using its front back legs. So it would use its front legs to push and its back legs to push the ball back. So it would be basically kicking the ball with its legs. And it would roll this down for many kilometers, very far distances. And this would be its basically its only job in order to procreate, fill the ch- it would be it would have the eggs inside the, uh, the ball of dung, and then when the when the task is complete, the scarab would die. And then what would emerge out of the ball of dung is after the pro, uh, the mating of the these insects is the children, or the offspring. They would come out and they would eat the ball of dung. In order to have their sustenance and nourishment, and then they can proceed on with their life and do the same thing, and. The reason you could see here everything is symbolic. The scarab pushes the ball, pushes the sun across the sky. And this was Kepri, known as also pushing the raw over the sky and then would descend into the east, into the west, excuse me, which is known as death. These are three strokes. These are considered the plural. Whenever you have three of them, you're basically saying it's the plural. So when this is manifestation, it, with, this, with these three, the plural, it means manifestations. So you have the plural right there. I'm trying to wave back at all of you as much as I can here. I'll wave, I'll wave, I'll wave. Thank you very much for watching, guys. So we're going to finish off the neb. This is the word. This is a basket. And this is the word neb. And this word can mean two things depending on its position. Where it sits here underneath Kepri and the three strokes, it means the word all. So all as in many. All. If you put it in above it, it would mean Lord. So Lord Kepri underneath, it's all manifestations. So that's usually the grammar. So this is the completion. We'll shift over here. Sorry about that. So now what we have here is the golden Horus. This here is basically means... Let me see here. Oh, sorry, we're just having. This is known as this is the word elevated. So to rise, to elevate certain things. So this is elevated appearances. So here you have basically the sun with its rays rising in the plural. So elevated appearances satisfies satisfies the gods. Plural the gods. This is known as nichir, so one is God and three is gods, as you can see the same in plural. Anything that repeats three times puts the plural. So let's put the word, the, the, um, the terminative or the word for elevate. So these are the three names. Usually there should be five for all pharaohs, but I've chosen, since I only have three cartouches, it would only be three names. We'll do the three strokes, same as the other one, same as over here, the three strokes. So this is the word appear, so this is the sun rising. So just imagine there's this is an entire horizon, and this is the sun, the half sun, as it's coming off the horizon. So this is the sun, half of it rising, and as it rises, it produces a ray of light is what you see above it. And this is how the Egyptians prescribed the rising or appearance or the sun appearing in the sky. So appearances. And then, we'll put in here, this is the... It. This is a papyrus. And this is a combination word. Chetep. Chetep. So this is the word chetep, but with these it complements them. Like that. And this is the T and the P, and that's chetep. And there you go, completes the word. Chetep. And finally, the gods, satisfies the gods. We'll do the three strokes. That's one, so we'll keep them close. This is what we're known as a flag. So when they built the temples, 
When they built, let's say, for example, the Temple of Karnak is just one of many examples. They would position these flags. These flags were to denote divine kingship or divinity. This was the symbol of the god, Nichir. And there you go. So this is my rough filling information, but I'll go ahead and complete it afterwards. So another little anecdote here, so you could see with ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic writing, when you read this particular cartouche, which is the personal name, you're reading it from right to left. How do you know this? Well, just look at the chick, look at the animals. They're facing the left. They're facing, excuse me, the right. So that means you read from the right. And that's how you do it. The same over here, this cartouche is the golden Horus and it's read from now the left. So from left to the top, to the three strokes, back down to the uh, folded cloth, papyrus, continuing down over here to the bread loaf, over to the, ba uh, to the seat or stool, and then to the gods who are also facing to the left. So you read from the left. Now, you have a right, a writing from the right, and then you have a writing from the left, and finally, you have a writing from the top to bottom. So you see so many directions the Egyptians wrote in. Neb Keperuri is written from the top down. So Neb Keperu Re. So you have three different directions of writing. Oops, sorry about that. Camera went off a little bit. Let's zoom out of here so you can see them all. So three directions of writing. You have from right to left, from left to right, and from top to down. And that's how ancient Egyptian writing happened. So what do we have at the bottom here, if you're curious? Well, this was done before I have filled out this right now. This was, this is pronounced, this is written as, again, the Anth, which you see in the name of Tutankhamun. The Anth. So you use this one word and it divides in two phrases. So the living, beloved, of Amun Re. See the Min? It's right up there. It's right over here. So Amun Re. Have you noticed the E and the N are missing? Because we know that this is Amun. Because here is the wave, which is also up there. But this is missing. But we know it's there. That's just supposed. We know it's, uh, the, it's Amun because we know the construct. And this is the Re with the stroke down here, which the, means that this is the Sun or Ra. Beloved, this is mur. This is uh, also the two consonant mur sound, which we know means love or beloved. And e muri. So the living beloved of Amun Re, and the same over here, the living beloved of Thoth. So Thoth or Jehuti. Now this is Thoth in English, but in Egyptian it was known as Jehuti, and this would be Jehu, and the T and the E sound, so Jehuti, and this is Thoth. So there you go, this is the hieroglyphics that you have here. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'll try to see if I can post it on uh, the IG page. You can watch it a little bit more later on. But thank you very much for watching. If you have anything you'd like to comment or ask any questions, my page is available to you. One more time, this is the personal name of Tutankhamun. We'll read it one more, one more time. Tut, T, U, T. Right, let me bring that closer. T, U, T, Anch, Imen. This is a compliment. Imen. So, Tut, Anch, Imen. Ruler of Southern. This is a plant of the South of Southern, or Shemai is the word pronunciation, transliteration. Iunu, Heliopolis. And this is the throne name. This is the name the people spoke the name of the Pharaoh. They never used his personal name, but his throne name out of respect, which is Neb Keperu Re. Many are the manifestations of Ra. And here is the living image of Amun, ruler of southern Yunu. And finally, the golden Horus, which was uh, the third name. Uh, there was also a Nepti name, the two sisters, and the Horus name, but this is the golden Horus name, right? Elevated are the, uh, so elevated are the appearances, 
which satisfies the gods. So there it is. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'll post this as a video and you guys can watch it later. Thank you for watching my page. Uh, I hope you're following and liking as well. Let me know if there's anything you want to know about or learn about and I'm happy to, to do it for you. So thank you very much and have a great day.